Good morning and welcome back to the Turtle Wins the Race Home-Based Business Podcast. My name is Kara Bunton. I've had a home-based business for 25 years, since 1999. It's a long time. So that's what we talk about here. And last week I was talking about imposter syndrome and I mentioned that one of the pieces of that is being afraid to put new products out into the world. And somebody had asked in the questions in my Facebook group about when is it a good time to do that and how do you appeal to a wide range of incomes? Because a lot of times you don't, like the things that you have are super expensive, but you also have a lower cost version of it, or maybe you don't. And you want to, the, it, it's the best, the best thing to do is to have a wide range of prices or products that people can buy that maybe if they can't afford an original painting, they can afford a print of it, right? And that way that you make, you can make more sales, you can appeal to a wider audience, but you also at the same time don't want to devalue the originals. I don't think that's really a problem. Spoiler alert, I don't think that's really a problem. Um, but it's just kind of the question about putting products out in the world and how do you price them and how do you get people to want to buy them? And how do you get people to be aware that you have different price points? That's another piece of it. This is all marketing. It all comes down to marketing. And I will do a separate video on my tutorials channel about product launches. I think I might have done one already. I'll, I'll check. But if I have a link to it at the end of this one, if not, I will just do a separate one. But I think what I'm going to do is do a video walking through the entire process of the launches that I did because there are very predictable patterns. And this works really well for things that you only offer at a certain time of year or they're one of a kind and they will sell out. Just anything that's going to have a limited availability, a product launch works really well for if you do it right. So if you have one of a kind items, if you make one of a kind jewelry, or I know people weave their own scarves, I know I've bought some of those. Hi, Gabriella. Um, but I, you know, it's one of a kind things work really well with product launches. Limited editions work really well with product launches, but the things that I sell that I can make a million times and are very low priced, they, it might not work as well because my customers aren't buying things just for fun. They're buying them for a specific purpose and they need a specific color, specific theme, specific size for whatever cake they're making. So depending on how your what you sell, launches might not work for you. They don't really work for me. I I did very successful product launches when I sold the classes that I used to sell. Okay, when I launched my classes, it it was the same formula as launching a product and it worked really well because there was a limited availability. But for everyone else who doesn't sell things that are limited availability, how do you do, how do you get products out there? Well, I would just list it. Honestly, I would just list it and then I would post on Pinterest. I would post on social media if you use social media, wherever you post. And there, there is an element of just getting it out there. You just have to get it out there. And that's, that's basically, you know, I'm, that just sums it up. You just have to get it out there. And I think a lot of people are afraid to just pull the trigger and put something out there because you're afraid of criticism. You're afraid it won't do well. You're afraid of whatever, you know, so what, who cares? I mean, this is, this is the thing that you have to remember if you put a product online and it doesn't sell, so what, who cares? Big deal. It didn't work. You're going to have other things that do work and you're not going to know what works and what doesn't work if you don't put it out there to begin with. Okay. So as far as limited edition stuff, you might want to think of product launches. As far as things that you can sell all the time, just put it out there, just list it, get it up. And you need to do the SEO for it. You need to make sure all the pieces are in place, but then list it. Okay. And don't say, oh my God, the pieces aren't in place yet. I can't list it. If you've got the title, you've got the description, you've got the product and the photos, you can list it. Okay. You can come back and do Pinterest later. You can come back and do social media later, but just getting it up and into the system, wherever you're selling it, it doesn't even matter. You need to get it up and into the system because it, the longer things are in the system, the better off they're going to do in the long run. Now, as far as, um, the process, like, let's say I do list something. What do I do after that? 
Okay, so I will list it usually on both, you know, I sell on Etsy, my website, and Go Imagine. So I'll list it either all of those places or depending on what it is, one or two of those places. I don't sell exactly the same things on all platforms. Some things I only want on my website, some things I only sell on Etsy because they're cheap, you know. Um, but depending on where I'm listing, I'm, I'm going to list it. Okay. When I list things, I make sure I have my photos. I make sure I have titles, descriptions, the tags of, you know, depending on what platform it is and that all the keywords are in place essentially. What I will then do is I do Pinterest pins. I don't generally do Facebook or Instagram, anything like that this year. I've taken a break from doing all that. Um, but I will do pins for that new product for Pinterest and I will pin them fairly soon. Like if not the same day, then maybe right after that. And I space those out over the course of a month. So I'll have like four or five new pins that go up for that product over the course of a month. Um, I might go back into my website and see if there's a blog article that I can add that item to, which would then link to the listing. And that kind of helps the search engines find your listing faster. Uh, because, you know, as far as search engines, because Google now will pull from my website, I don't have to go in and update my Google Merchant Center feed because Google finds the new listing, so that's okay. So I don't have to do anything for that. But before this, I would go in and add that thing to the Google Merchant Center feed that Google Merchant Center will then pull it and show that listing in search results for products. What else do I do? I will mention it in my newsletter. Okay, so I'll mention it in the newsletter. This is a new product. And I pretty much do that every single week. I'll, I have one focus topic product that I mention in the newsletter every week. And I usually try to make it something new, whether it's brand new or it's kind of a packaged up version of old things that I am putting together in a new arrangement. That's a different matter. But I, I will mention it in the newsletter and I get that out to my subscribers. What else? That's about it. Okay, so it's not that hard to get something up online to sell. And then you just have to promote it where you promote it and then let the SEO do the rest, okay? You can usually tell pretty quickly if something is going to start getting views, if something is starting you know, to start getting sales. And, you know, honestly, I don't pay attention to that. I don't, I do not, I genuinely do not go in and look at the traffic to individual listings anywhere. I just, I don't. It doesn't matter because I'm looking at overall sales. And when something comes up for renewal on Etsy, I might look at it, but chances are I'm just going to go renew, 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 and I'll go on with my life. Okay. But you basically, when something is new and that you can make multiple times, just list it, have a little checklist. Where do you want to promote this? Where do you want to post about it? Check all those off and then move on, move on with your life. That's all you need to do. Now, as far as price points, because that was the other piece of this question, is how do you promote to people who have different price points that they're looking for? I think it's a really good idea to have high, medium, low. I've always said at least three tiers of pricing. And let's stick with the, exp the example of original paintings, okay? Um, I know that Dougie, who is in my eShop group, does he does dark art paintings. They're all original. But he also has prints of them, and then he has different products that he makes with them. So there's different price points in his shop and on his website, depending on what you're looking for. And that appeals to different customers because some customers really want to spend the money on an original painting, but some people can't afford it, but they still like the artwork and they want to buy a print. So depending on what you want to do with your business, some people only want to stick with original artwork. That's perfectly fine. But I think you're really opening the net to other people being able to afford your products if you have lower priced items, if the only things that you have are originals. And I am, I am kind of thinking about paintings, but it could be, you know, let's, let's say we're talking about jewelry. You might want to do a line of jewelry with more expensive stones and then a line of jewelry with stones that are less expensive. I wouldn't say less quality. See, this is one thing I think that people will try to do is they'll do something that's less quality and call that the cheap line. 
I, I wouldn't do that. I would still give people the same quality, but maybe there are stones that are less expensive. And so you can charge less for them in the finished product, but it's still a good quality. The, see, the quality thing is very tricky because what you don't want to happen is you don't want someone to come along and see this beautiful thing, regardless of jewelry or painting or whatever, and then say, I can't afford that. I'll just get this one that's cheaper. And then they get the cheaper item in the mail and they're like, this is junk. This is, this is gross. This is plastic. And then they're never going to come back. They're never going to come back to your, sh your shop to get that more expensive thing. But if someone who can't afford the more, let's, let's say, let's say you make emerald, emerald bracelets. Okay. Or I don't know if that's really a thing that's going to be super expensive. Okay. Anyway, you make emerald bracelets. Let's say that you have a bracelet that has 10 emeralds on it. That's going to be a lot more expensive than maybe a bracelet that has one, right? But it's still the same quality of the stone. And you could make a nice bracelet that only has one and a nice bracelet that has 10 and charge very different price points for those. So that's the kind of approach that I would take. Try to think of a way that you can kind of offer the same type of quality, but at a lower price point because your costs are lower. And as we're going back to artwork, prints are very easy because you can do prints of things. You need to make sure that it's a high quality print. And a lot of painters are very conscious about this and photographers. They're very conscious about the quality of the prints because they want the colors to be right. They want it to look nice. They want the, the paper to be a nice heavy weight, whatever the medium is. And that's, that's the kind of thing that you need to be aware of and pay attention to. You need to buy samples, work with the print, you know, that's up to you, but it, it's a good idea to always have the high, medium, low just for accessibility of people's budgets and then also have other products maybe because the person that asked this question said that she was going to have like mugs and tote bags and t-shirts and some type POD type products with her artwork on it and I'm all for that. It just gives people more options to spend some money with you if they see something that they really love, but they can't afford the expensive one. Okay, I'm all for that. Now, the other piece of that is that when you have high, medium, low, it, it does make people come back because like I said, maybe they can't afford that painting now, maybe in five years they have a, a job that pays more they have more discretionary money to spend and they will come back and get that painting if they still love it or if they love your artwork they're going to keep in touch with you they're going to sign it for your email list that's where you kind of nurture your email list and send people updates every week so they stay there you're, you're in their minds right they remember that you're there and that's the kind of thing where you have repeat customers who maybe they couldn't afford it when they were in their 20s, but now they're in their 30s and they have a job that pays better, whatever, and they can come and afford an original art piece. That's the kind of thing that is, it, it's another reason to have that, okay? The third reason, well, it's kind of the first and the second. Um, the, the other piece of this is that when people see that high price, that's, this is the anchor pricing theory of anchor pricing, right? You don't know how much something costs until you shop for it. If you've never shopped for original artwork before, you might be horrified at how much some painters are charging, but they can charge that much because their paintings have sold for that in the past, or they have a reputation, or they have a, a really good agent or whatever the situation is. But that anchor pricing for them is probably gonna be higher than anchor pricing for someone who's just starting out. And the anchor price is just the price that people think is normal, like the average normal price, right? So I might think that the average normal price for a car, let's talk about cars because, uh, you know, a few years ago, the price of used cars went crazy. And everybody kind of in your mind has an anchor price for used cars, like maybe twelve dollars to $16,000, depending on how old it is, the whole thing. And they were selling for like $30,000 for a used car, because of different things that were going on in the market. So at that point, everybody was like, oh my God, used cars are so expensive. This is crazy because their anchor pricing was telling them that it should be half of what they're actually being told it costs. Now, someone who has never bought a car before might walk onto the car lot and say a used car for $30,000 and think that that is the normal price because they've never shot for a car before. So now in their minds, the anchor price for a used car is $30,000. 
All right, so if they come back in a year and the prices have dropped back to 16, they're gonna be like, oh my God, this is so cheap. Whereas someone who has the anchor price of 16 is gonna say, oh my God, things are back to normal. So it's a perception thing, but the anchor pricing is important because what studies have shown with purchasing and is, is that people will usually go for the middle price because they don't want the cheapest one, but they might not be able to afford the, the most expensive. So they're thinking, okay, there's something cheap about the cheap one. I don't want that. I can't afford the expensive one. I'll go with the middle one. And that's generally what people do. And I think I have talked about this before a few times, but anchor pricing is used a lot in the wedding industry, especially for things like venues and photographers and florists, because they know that people will buy that middle one. They'll buy that package that has a few extra features than the base price. They always call it something like base price, um, I don't even know. Some people did like gold, silver, bronze, like the gold package, the silver pack, the bronze pack. Nobody wants the bronze package. That's third place, right? Some of you people, most people go with the silver because that's better than bronze, but they can't afford the gold. And gold usually has stuff in it that you don't really need. And they know that people aren't going to buy that one. They want, they want people to buy the silver package. So that's why they have the two reference prices at either end and they're they're targeting people to buy that middle package. So if you and your store have prices that are varied, like you have some that are very expensive, kind of aspirational, that's the aspirational price, okay? And some that are less expensive, people generally go for the middle one. And it, this is this is just how people work. It's just how things work. So having the different price tiers can really help with that okay and that's that's one way to make things obvious now what I have in my shop I think I have mostly I do have most things are twelve dollars because I just sell cake decorations so they're very inexpensive I have one set of things that I've cut basically in half so if you get 48 tiny butterflies in the package of twelve dollars I have some for eight dollars that you get 24 so what people will see there is that they're like, I get 24 for eight, but wait, I could get 48 for only $4 more. So I get double and I'm not paying double of the $8, which would be 16. I'm paying 12. So that's another thing is that you can put your pricing up in a way that makes people think they're getting more value, which they really are, you know, but they're getting more for their money. It feels like they're getting more for their money if they buy that middle price. There's all kinds of things you can do with pricing. Um, do not run a sale perpetually. That's illegal. A lot of countries have very strict laws about that. So you need to check that. And I heard people, I hear people talk about that all the time. Just put a strike through the price and leave it there. That works. It's illegal. Don't do that. It's deceptive pricing for consumer protections. Um, yeah, but anyway, back to back to the launch thing. When you launch, I'll, I'll go into launches on my other channel, but I think the time, the best time to release a product is right now. Nobody can sell, nobody can buy it if you aren't selling it. So I know a lot of people say, I've got all these things, I need to drip them out. No, just list them all now because nobody can buy it if they can't find it. And if you don't list it, they can't find it. And if you have to come back later and do the promotion because you're busy listing things, that's fine. It can wait. The most important part is just to get things up and available and then people can buy it. But there is a lot more that goes into it if you really want to get into the nuts and bolts. Um, I will, I'll, I'm going to look to see if I did something about launches and I'll put that at the end of this video. But I think that I will go and do like a whole thing about it that's more detailed. And so, you know, go to my tutorials channel, subscribe to that. It's Cara Bunton Tutorials. Give this video a thumbs up. And I will talk to you later. And I will do a launch video for that other channel. So watch for that. Okay. I'll see you next week.